Hello, beautiful ones. I'm so happy that you are here with me today. My name is Adriana Arceta for the ones that I haven't met yet. And I hope that one of these days we will able to share space again in our beautiful museum. Uh, so this is Culture Kids and today we're going to be talking about this fantastic uh, country called Pakistan. Um, Pakistan is a country in South Asia and um, it's one of the world's earliest and largest civilizations and it's home to the second highest mountain. It's called K2 and it's something very interesting about this country is uh, Pakistan's pride Malala maybe you have heard about her I even made a painting of Malala because she is so very important she has been really active and she has fought really hard for children to have an education in Pakistan children weren't able to go to schools so uh, she has made a very important um, thing in the world she has always a, been a fighting for human rights so um, you will see that in this fantastic bag that we have here, the first thing that you are going to see is this coloring page of Malala, so you can uh, learn how important she is. But now that we saw our bag, should we see and take out what else is in there? Oh, so we have some red paper, yellow paper, white paper, and some glue, and a brown marker. So that's going to be for our craft after. And um, the national sport of Pakistan is field hockey, but the most popular sport is cricket. And the national drink is sugar cane juice, and they call it raw. And um, the way they say hello in Pakistan uh, is hello. It sounds pretty similar to the way we say hello here in Canada. And um, why don't we say hello to each other, hello, uh, the way they do it. And for that, let's sing together. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. You can say it once, you can say it again. It's as easy to say as counting to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hello, hello, hello. And now that we have said hello and we have talked a little bit about Pakistan, we have a beautiful story to read today. And if you are ready, just join me. But to get started, let's just prepare and let's just rub our hands. And when you're rubbing your hands, you're going to start to feel some warmth. So imagine that you are creating some light in there. And once you feel that warmth and you're ready, just bring your hands really close to your eyes and feel that light, that energy in them. So when you take off your hands, your channels of perception with your eyes are really open and ready for what you are going to see and hear in our story. Our story is called Rani in Search of a Rainbow and it is written by Shaila Abdullah. Here we go. Rani in search of a rainbow. Rani woke up to shimmering sun rays and raced outside the tent. She laughed at the dotted campsite around her. She lived in a campsite. It will be a great day. She sang and danced around the poles of her tent. The sun was a welcome break from days of continuous rain. 
been raining for very long. A few weeks ago, the rain had started innocently in their village in Pakistan. Peter Potter dancing droplets with a signal to the young children that it was time to celebrate by dancing. And dance they did. And in a few days, the bright blues of the rain turned to murky browns and stayed still on the ground. The rivers and creeks overflowed, but the rain did not stop. Unaware, Rani and her friends did paddle, dance, and run in the water. Um, it is time to leave, Daddy, Rani's grandma announced. And for once, Rani did not ask why. Families ran in different directions. Rani's friends were rushing behind their own families in a sea of color. In their hands, they clutched what little they could save from the floods, a book or two, a favorite doll, a change of clothes. From a distance, Rani's home looked like a helpless boat as the water surrounded it. All Rani could think of were her treasures in there. Her tiny notebook with her essay on what she wanted to be when she grew up and so many things she left behind. Rani's family was soon rescued and flown to a refugee campsite in a helicopter. Rani skipped toward Beanie's tent, holding her headscarf close to her face. The baby didn't come that day, she thought happily to herself, but she will come today. I am going to help unload some supplies at the relief center, her father called out to her. They need all the help they can get. Let's stay safe. Outside Beanie's tent, Rani caught sight of her mother coming out with a big tray of supplies. What are you doing there? Her mother asked. I have come to see the baby, said Rani, unable to contain her excitement. She came a few minutes ago, her mother said. I knew it, laughed Rani. Inside the tent, Beanie's baby was fast asleep, draped in a white cloth. Look how cute the baby is. I want to help, said Rani, turning to her mother. What can I do? Her mother looked around and shook her head. I am afraid there isn't much you can do, she said. Rani was disappointed but she decided to pay a visit to her friend Juju. It's nice that she wanted to help, huh? Do you help at home too? Juju was a little boy who lived in the tent next to Rani's. He had been sick ever since his family arrived a week ago. Rani had met him for the first time in the line for blankets and they had been the last ones in the line. And when Rani's turn came, there was only one blanket left. And what did they do? They grabbed hold of another corner of it. As they both tucked and pulled, the blanket had ripped in half, landing the children on the ground. At first, they had been horrified, but then they burst out laughing. <laughs> I am Rani in 708. I am Juju in 709. That's the campsites, right? In the, well, in the tents, the number of tents that were staying. And that's how they had become friends. Rani found out that Juju's family had narrowly escaped the floods and left with only the clothes they were wearing. She found Juju playing with a ball outside his tent. 
He was wearing an oversized shirt that Daddy had tried to fix for him, and his cheeks had a rosy glow. Do you think that we will ever go to school again? Juju asked when they took a break for water. Ronnie shrugged her shoulders. I don't know. My mother says that they will be starting classes here soon for kids like you and me. They were excited, thinking that they were going to have some books. Rani shook her head. They are making Harlem, and your daddy said that children could have popsicles afterward. I know, said Rani, tossing the ball high toward the cornfield in the distance. Juju, why do you think they are cooking something special today? It is eight, silly, Juju said. Don't you remember? Ha Rani had forgotten all about Eid. Each day, the celebration of Ramadan Eid came after several days of fasting. From sunrise to sunset, grown-ups stopped coming to tables for meals. Evening called for a big feast and much celebration. There were always treats for children. This year, the 30 days of Ramadan had been a time of great changes in their lives. They didn't have any feasts. Um, so she tried not to think of her red dress that she used to wear back home or the dinner table full of delights. They were difficult times. Let's go find Daddy, Rani told Juju. Daddy could always cheer Rani up. They saw that they were cooking something in the area, and she asked, can I help too? Her father kissed her cheek and shook his head. I don't think so. These boxes are too heavy, and you are too little. Rani frowned and tugged on her scarf. I don't know what you mean, but her father had already left with a group of men, so she couldn't help again. Juju and Rani ran off to the area where a group of brightly clothed women were stirring a large pot. They were chanting a little tune, inviting the sunshine to stay forever. The children were just in time to see an old woman toss uh, a pot with sizzling meat. Rani paused to peek inside the pot and marvel at the bubbling brown stew. She inhaled happily. It smelled comforting, like home. Daddy was in a corner grinding spices on a stone. Rani, Juju, Come over here, she called. Sit by me and tell me what you have been doing today. Not much, but she wanted to help again to cook. Uh, the lady said, patience, child. She wiped the sweat from Rani's forehead and offered her a sip of water from a steel cup. Food will be ready soon. Chased away once again, the children went to the nearby cornfield to play until it was time to eat. Finally, the meal was served. Although the portions of Halim were small, the food was delicious. And they had popsicles after that. Their little tummies were full and it was time for more play. I'm glad that they are having better times now that they have food and water. Rani and Juju found an abandoned bucket. Inside it, rainwater had collected over the last few days. Rani squinted and called out Juju excitedly, Look, look, it's a rainbow in a bucket. Children can find color anywhere. Rani heard a familiar voice and looked up to see Daddy smile at her. Next to her stood Rani's mother.
they are also the first ones to find joy. Yes, children are the first ones to find joy, said Rani's mother, pointing ahead. Around midday, Juju began to feel too sick to play and went back to his tent. Rani thought of her father's word, try to help in a way only children can. What did that mean? She wondered. She heard a child cry nearby. The child's mother was bathing him in a large cooking pot outside their tent. Uh, so Rani decided to play with the baby and the boy's mother was grateful and when she came back she brought some raisins for Rani. So Rani had another treat. After what, Rani went to check on Juju as she munched on her raisins. raisins. She, he was running a fever and had the chills, not feeling very well. Juju's mother put cold clothes over Juju's forehead to try to bring down the fever. Don't worry, Juju's mother told Rani, he will be better soon. She so wanted to help her friend, but did, didn't know how. How nice of her that she wanted to help her friend. Suddenly, Rani had an idea so bright, her whole face lit up. She went to look for her grandmother. Daddy, what is your sewing kit that you used to repair Juju's shirt? She asked. Inside the suitcase, Daddy answered, why do you need it? Rani was too excited to answer and raced back to the tent. She went to Juju's tent and borrowed his half of the orange blanket. Rani said, was set to work using the largest needle that she was allowed to use. She stitched carefully and it needed to be perfect, she thought. Those started settling on the campsite and Rani's family returned one by one. Rani packed her secret project away to finish the next day. But it was dark already. She stared at the twinkling star in the night sky instead. Its brilliance made her happy. At first she did not hear the sound of crying that came from the other tent, but then she heard it loud and clear. It sounds like Juju, Rani thought. She slipped out of her tent and peeked inside the one next to her. Juju, what's the matter? Juju did not answer. He wasn't feeling well. Rani quickly ran back to her tent. The gift had to be delivered early. Juju, she went to Juju's tent and gently covered him with it with that blanket that she had fixed. Juju's eyes flew open, is it? Yes, it is our blanket, Rani Giggle. I fixed it for you. For tonight? Juju asked. No, silly, forever. It's a gift from me. Juju's eyes, eyes twinkle like the shining stars in the night sky. He was so happy to have that blanket. Rani returned to her tent. She snuggled with her mother, her heart full and joyful, and leaned over to her father. I found a way to help in a way I only can. Tomorrow it will be sunny. If I want it to be, Rani thought happily as she turned, go, turned to go to sleep. Not surprisingly, her dreams were about books babies and blankets. D and I hope that you enjoyed the book. It really made me think of how grateful I am that you can go later on to school if you want and you can also have food and water at all times at home. We are lucky to be in a country like Canada. In Pakistan they do not have the same um, 
uh, things that you can have right here. And for that, just a reminder about this very important person from Pakistan, Malala. And you will be able to color um, this coloring sheet with the face of Malala later on. And um, maybe you can ask your parents to tell you a little bit more about hair. But it is our time to do our craft. I'm very excited about it. I don't know if you have heard before about henna hands. The woman wear these uh, beautiful uh, designs made of henna that it looks like about this color that you have in your bag. And if you are ready, let's set it up so we can start doing our craft. For that, you have your red paper that you're gonna have aside. But first, we are gonna go and trace our hands in, um, in the white paper. Yours are going to be is smaller than mine. What you can do if you are doing this activity with a family member, you can make one of your hands and then trace the one of the other. You can use a pencil to do that. So I'm gonna trace my hands. Maybe um, they can help you to do that. Then I'm going to trace my other hand. Doing it with pen so you are able to see what I am doing. So now that you have traced your hands, it's time to cut away. So try your best and ask for help if you are needing it. The henna hands look so beautiful. Maybe later your uh, mom or dad can help you to look for some videos about Pakistan and the way uh, they dress and how the women uh, sometimes have these henna hands. So go ahead and cut away your little hands. We're gonna be doing lots of cutting with this activity. But I hope that you are having fun while you are working. So I have one hand here and the other one to go. Did you cut your um, right hand, left hand, or did you do it with one of your siblings or your mom or dad? Hang on. I'm gonna put my leftover paper here. I'm gonna move this away. And now the next step is going to be to glue your hands over the yellow paper. And for that, you can use a glue stick and then glue away, making sure that you have glue in each of the fingers. Once you got it all covered in glue, you can go, go and paste away. Go with my second hand. So 
facts are reminding the country that we are uh, talking about is Pakistan and the language that they speak is Urdu. Do you remember that we said hello in Urdu? Hello? So once I have already uh, my hands glued in my yellow paper, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut some uh, of the yellow paper around the hands. You decide if you want to do like a bigger a part of yellow, it's up to you. But this is easier than a uh, cutting your hands. This is an old faster too. So go ahead while you are working at home, just a reminder to take deep breaths so you can relax with the activity. So it's better when we take the time to breathe deeply. And I have one hand ready, the other one to go. And I got them ready here. So I'm going to now take my red paper and I'm going to glue again these hands. On top of it. You have this beautiful combination of colors, red, yellow, white. And then instead of the henna, that is kind of a paste with this uh, pigment, and we are gonna use our marker and I'm gonna show you my sample. As you can see, they have different designs. If you look for videos, you will see, or for pictures, you're gonna see how they design different things, flowers and uh, hearts, whatever you feel like doodling inside of your hands, go ahead. I like to do spirals. They are fun to do. So let's just try our best. You can make some leaves in there get creative. You can go and make a huge spiral there. I wonder what designs you are creating at home, but I'm sure they must be looking good. I hope that you are having fun doodling. It's a great way to calm our minds. Have you finished doodling away your henna hands? I am done with mine. As you can see, they are both different. I'm sure that yours are very unique as well. And I really hope that you did enjoy uh, doing the craft. 
and it was my pleasure to have you here today. I'm so glad that you joined and I can't wait to see you again for the next countries. But uh, just a, a little bit of uh, reminder again about Pakistan, the language that they speak is Urdu, that there's this very important woman, Malala, that uh, since very young, she uh, worked for the rights of children to have an education. And, um, and let's now say goodbye in Urdu, and the way that they say is Allah Hafiz. Can you say that? Allah Hafiz. Should we say goodbye the same, the same way that we said hello? It's time Allah Hafiz. And are you ready to sing with me? Goodbye, goodbye, Allah Hafiz. Goodbye, goodbye, Allah Hafiz. You can say it once, you can say it again. It's as easy to say as counting to ten. Come with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Goodbye, goodbye, Allah Hafiz. Hope to see you soon. Have a wonderful day and keep amazing as you are. Bye-bye. <laughs>